Hi guys, I'm Ian from Health Club Harvey Bay. We're going to show you how to do some deadlifts today with John. He's doing a bit of dancing in the background. <laughs> He's having a bit of a good time. So we're going to start doing, show you how to do a conventional deadlift, a sumo and then Romanian deadlifts. And then we're going to show you a few things you could do better. So he's going to show you a bit of bad technique and we're going to show how, how we can fix it. No worries, we'll get going. Thank you. Right, Jonathan, let's right. go do 10 conventional deadlifts, mate. Conventional deadlifts. Yep, that's it. That's good. Push the feet through the floor and pull the shoulders back. That's good, mate. Let's go down. Good, really good. You see his back's nice and straight. He's got his neutral alignment of his spine and he's pulling back his shoulders. That's really good. That's good, mate. That's just about perfect technique. That's good. He's keeping his weight in his heels and he's pushing his feet through the floor and pulling his shoulders back. This is what they call a posterior chain exercise. So it's working the whole back of your body and it's working your forearms. So it's a, a compound exercise that uses a lot of energy and it's really good to strengthen your back and weight loss and just get some power. Well mate, let's do some um, sumo deadlifts now. So he puts his feet out nice and wide as far as he can, puts it through, the same technique. So just go straight, straight down the floor, John. Yeah, that's good. So it's sumo. That's it, that's good mate. And this is just a, a different style of deadlift. Um, it's getting popular lately for ladies to do because they've got shorter legs, not like Jonathan, they're about six foot long. Um, and he's doing a really good job of that. This is the first, second time he's ever conventional deadlift. So he's doing really well. So we're going to have a spell with this one. And then we're going to do... Um, so that'll do, Jonathan. And then we're going to do some... Romanian deadlifts or RDLs they're called. So they will really work on your, your hamstrings and your lower back more than anything else. Um, there's a substitute for uh, leg curls sometimes. People like doing them. So um, we might have a go at that now. Jonathan? So he's going to pick it up like a conventional deadlift. So you're going to come up and just bend at the hips and bend the knees a little tiny bit. So he's working his lower back here, his glutes, his hamstrings. And it's nearly like, nearly like a deadlift, but he's bending his knees a little tiny bit, so it takes pressure off his lower back. And it's, that's really good. I think he'll be starting to fatigue a little bit soon. So he's, he's working pretty hard. That's good, Jonathan. Oh, John, sorry. So again, He's keeping a good natural uh, alignment of his spine. He's not bending his back. So, and that'll do, I reckon. John, put it down, eh? That's good, mate. You're fatiguing a bit. He's sweating a bit. <laughs> so, Ian, what are the benefits of deadlifting? The benefits of deadlifting is it's um, you get a neural, I mean, neural adaptation to your exercise. So we're waking up more muscle. You wake up more muscle, you use him a lot more energy. Um, you get a hormonal response from deadlifts. It's like a flight, fight or flight hormones that make you produce more testosterone that helps you build muscle and drop body fat. So, um, and it makes you feel good. It gets your endorphins going. Um, so you feel like you can lift a planet type thing. It's, it makes you, makes you, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Hi Rebecca, hi Zed. Um, a question here is what muscles are you working when you do a deadlift? The muscles you're working, it goes the whole posterior chain. So you work in your, your, your calves, your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back, your middle and upper back, your, your traps, you're working your forearms, your biceps, your, your fingers, all your, all your little extensions on your fingers. So when you've had a good deadlift day, you feel it the whole lot of your back, your belly, it works your core as well. So it works, this, this exercise probably uses, or does use more uh, muscles than most other exercises. Probably the only other things of weightlifting exercises could use the same amount of any, uh, muscles, but they're high risk exercises. This isn't throwing a weight above your head, so you've got less chance of injury. 
and you, you can get this technique a lot better than weightlifting. So that's why a lot of trainers use that instead of the big compound moves. Hi Julie, uh, another question here is um, how do you not have a rounded back? So basically you start looking, you might look at yourself in a mirror, you do a postural screen before you start doing things. So if you look Jonathan on the side here, he's got a good natural alignment, so he's got his um, curve and his lower back here, so he's keeping that. So when we, yeah, he's doing a bit of dancing, he, he does look good. Um, so he's keeping in a natural alignment of his spine, so he comes down and we coached John a little bit before this. He hasn't done much deadlifting at all and he's keeping his natural alignment. If, he, his, if his natural alignment of his spine was a little bit out, we might go to the mirror or I'd film him to show, show him how to get things better. Um, the videos are really good to get technique right. Um, some people will deadlift with a rounded back. They say it, it shouldn't hurt, but I think a good, a good natural alignment of your spine, you get less chance of hurting yourself. I'd rather do that than say, oh, I mightn't hurt myself. So technique is king. Is that, is that the main thing people get wrong, is the rounded, rounded back? Rounded back and try and lift too much weight. They get the ego in the way, they want to lift too much weight. And they, and they want to see what their one rep max is, where they should be staying to eight sixes, unless you know, three or four times a year try and find your one rep max, because you've got too much chance of hurting yourself. So we, if you can do more and do it in good technique, you shouldn't hurt yourself. But if we do one reps all the time, it's just too, too hard on your neural system and your body to repair. All right, what about rest, Ian? How much rest should you have between sets? Rest between sets, a minute to five minutes. Um, the, you've got to get your energy systems back because it's such a big lift. Um, and it's using so much of your lower back and your glutes and stuff. If you're not fully recovered, you, you've got a chance of injury. But the other thing is your energy systems have, have to replenish, replenish the, um, the stores so you're not going to be able to perform that lift in an optimal way. Uh, this works so well because you're waking up so much more muscle for weight loss because you, um, the muscles are woken up. They stayed up, woken up between 24 to 48 hours after you train. So it's a really good exercise. You feel really hungry after you do these exercises yeah. <laughs> because it, it's, um, you need energy to, to replenish those muscles. So for weight loss, if you're eating well and don't eat much rubbish after something like this, when you go to bed, you're losing weight. Um, Did you hear that? When you go to bed, you're losing weight. <laughs> he was 100 kilos yesterday. <laughs> so we're going to go through a few things we probably shouldn't do when we're deadlifting. Uh, rounding your back. So Jonathan's going to do a few deadlifts with his back rounded and straight back, so that type of thing, around his back, he, he's, that's putting a lot of pressure on your lower back. This is only really low. He's losing his natural alignment of his spine. He's putting a lot of pressure on his lower back. Um, so he's, he's, he's straightening his legs before he comes out. Where he was deadlifting before, he was coming back in one, one movement. Um, like that, he was going like that in one movement. So if he goes like that, his legs are, legs are straightened, so he's putting a little, too much pressure on his lower back. Um, but he, for John being so tall, he's doing these really well. A shorter person does them a lot easier. Because he's got lo long levers, it's hard to do good technique, which, which is really good. Um, so we're going to start training John in the next few months to maybe do a powerlifting competition. And um, so we'll show, show you shots, progress shots in the way. <laughs> It's all about having fun too. Yeah, you sit absolutely. down, you, you do an exercise, you sit down, have a chat to the people around you. So it gets a community, not just coming to the gym. Uh, hi Kim, um, thanks for watching. Another question here is, should beginners use the trap bar? You can, all depends. If you've got a really dicky lower back, we might even start with two dumbbells and doing two dumbbells. So we, we have a look at the size. So. So Lana that's doing this, she's only 50 something kilos. 
So we start really light with the, the bar because she wants to go in the powerlifting competition. Uh, trap bar is good, this is good. It's a slightly different uh, movement than the trap bar because it's rounded, so you get in and it's more central. Um, some people like using that, some people like doing that. It's, do you like veggie mode or do you like peanut paste on your toast? It's all good. Yeah. And what about different grips when you're doing it? Different grips, different you can do different grips. Some people use straps. Um, they're all right, but um, if you're weak at slinks your hands and you want to go in a powerlifting competition, the, the straps aren't going to help you because you're not going to get them stronger. You're relying on, your, on the straps to be strong, so you can't use that. Um, people use an alternate grip. Can you show the alternate grip, Jonathan? So one hand like that, one hand like that. That's supposed to, when you pick it up, the bar can't run it like that or like that. You can, some people use a weightlifting grip now, like over the top or like that. It doesn't really matter, but most people can't lift really heavy with this. Um, they'll turn it, some people can, they've got really good grips. Um, doesn't matter. Yeah, same thing. If you're happy with that grip and you can, you can lift, it's all good. The biggest thing is um, if people got rings on, you want to pull the rings off because it'll, you'll rip skin off your fingers with it and you get calluses. That really hurt. Hi Laurie, no hi Kylie. No. Maybe we can fix that. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Have you got any other questions? Um, if anyone's watching who has a question, feel free to pop it up now. Um, how heavy should you go? Um, it's more on the repetitions. So if you're going, if you're getting really keen, we can do what they call a periodization program. You start really light on three sets of 10 and about 12 weeks later, you finish on your deadlifts on two sets of two. But we need to find a one rep max or something, go through a little bit of testing to work that out. Um, that would be like a week out from a competition. Uh, other times when I do my repetitions, I'll go between 20 repetitions to 15, um, probably no less than six most of the time because it's just getting too heavy. Um, the, the thing is, every time you train, you're a different person than what you were the day before. So the perfect reps yesterday aren't the perfect reps for you today. So if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same outcome. So we need to change our reps and sets all the time and there's no perfect one every time. What about people that aren't training for a powerlifting competition and they're just doing supersetting or it's in a circuit? You can, you can superset, but because it's such a big movement, if you go from that to another one, you have to get your technique right. Um, I will sometimes do squats, deadlifts and bench presses in a huge set, and then I'll do four sets of each, and in working set, warm up and go to that. But after that, you don't train for a couple of days because you've done so much and you set yourself up for fatigue and that type of thing. Yeah. We're live. <laughs> Hi, Samantha. Um, I think that's all the questions that have come through. That's good. Hopefully I've um, helped a little bit and we'll see what goes on. Thank you very much. Now dance break. Yeah. <laughs>